Hello, greetings uh, to uh, you, good friends, brothers and sisters in Christ uh, in Grenada. Hello to uh, Father Hugh as well, a good friend who I studied with in Rome. Um, my name is Father Marco. I'm a priest uh, here in England in the UK for the Archdiocese of Birmingham. Um, I'm actually at the moment uh, based in a parish in uh, Stoke, which is a, a town um, to the sort of the, the north of England. Um, the close, one of the closest main cities would be Manchester, which maybe you've heard of because of Manchester United or Manchester City. So, um, so that's where I'm uh, based. Um, so I just thought I'd um, share with you some very simple, really, reflections on uh, Matthew chapter 25, uh, verses 31 to 40. Um, ideas which probably are, are not new to you at all that you know already, but anyway, sometimes it's good to hear it from another voice and, and to hear these things repeated because um, sometimes we, uh, like children, like children of God, we need to hear the same things repeated again and again. Um, so that we can understand the message that Christ is trying to teach us. Um, so here are just a few thoughts that hopefully can help you uh, as you prepare um, for Lent. So I think the first, one of the first things that strikes us uh, reading this passage um, is that our actions count, <laughs> that our Lord is, is interested um, in every aspect of our life, every aspect, but especially our, our actions, they're, they're the things that, that speak volumes, uh, as we say. So we know at the, at the end of life, um, when hopefully we come before St. Peter at the gates, um, he's not going to sit us down and, and get us to do a, a theology exam. He's not going to test us on how well we know the catechism, though it's good that we know it well. <laughs> but uh, that's not the main thing in life. He's not going to ask us about how successful uh, we were, whether that's in the secular world, in the normal world, you know, how many businesses we ran or how well they did, what our profits were, the cost of our shares, or um, those of us um, working um, more directly for the church is not gonna ask us how many schools we built or parishes and so on. Um, if we're family members, he's not gonna ask us, you know, what our children do for a living, how successful they were. Um, as priests as well, he's not gonna ask us whether we preached uh, nice homilies, whether we said nice things. Uh, but what really counts for our Lord is uh, our actions. Can we say with our life that if somebody was to look at our life in silence without <clears throat> any volume, just without being able to hear what we say, um, if they were just to look at our life um, from the things that we do, would they be able to tell uh, that we loved, that we loved those around us, uh, that we served them with our hands uh, and with our feet, with our actions? And so I think that's one of the main things that comes uh, to me, at least from this passage, that our actions really are the things that count. And what are we meant to do with our hands and our feet? How are we meant to serve the Lord and serve our brothers and sisters? Well, our Lord says, um, you have to give food to the hungry, drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, care for the sick, and visit prisoners. Now, all of these things, I don't know about Grenada, but these things in, in England are kind of difficult to do because... Um, for the most part, most of the people we meet day to day in our lives um, have enough food to eat. They have enough drink. Um, we don't meet that many strangers. Not many strangers come knocking to the door. Um, I mean, in a parish, maybe a bit more, but for most people at your home, a stranger won't come by. Uh, you won't see many naked people needing clothes. Um, here I actually live uh, very close to one of the biggest uh, hospitals in the UK. Um, so all the care for the sick is done very, very well there. And then to visit prison as well <laughs> in the UK is certainly very difficult. You have to go through all these checks and unless you know somebody, um, it's very difficult just to walk into a prison. So that leaves us asking, well, how can I serve you, Lord? How can I serve my brothers and sisters if these things are not so, so easy for me? 
And I think the main thing is not to focus so much on exactly the things that our Lord mentions, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty and so on. But I think behind all of these things, what um, Jesus is saying to us is, um, do you see the needs of those around you? Do you notice their needs? And do you try to do something about it? And I think it's true that if we really try to uh, look at the people around us, to look at them with the eyes of Christ um, and really kind of pray about them and see them as children of God and look deeply into their lives, into their souls. We see that everyone around us really, once we just dig a little bit, everyone is in need. Everyone has needs. Um, all of us have our own struggles in life. And sometimes these are things that we can't help with. Uh, we just have to pray about. Uh, but often they're just little, you know, there are little things that we can do to, to serve those around us. Perhaps you're in a room watching this together and there are people around you and maybe you can just uh, think in your heart right now of those around you. Is there anyone in this room that has a need? What are those needs? And is there anything that I can do about it? Are there any needs there that I am the one that Jesus is asking uh, to do the service, to do that act of kindness to my brother or to my sister. Then so often in our daily lives, there are needs around us that, that go hidden, but we just have to look out for, that we have to seek. Um, I was thinking the other day when I was sat at table eating with somebody, how um, my, my glass had uh, already been emptied of, of water, I'd already drunk everything. And already somebody was, was pouring me some more water or whatever drink it was um, before I even noticed. So there somebody had actually looked out for me, had looked to see, saw that I, I had an empty glass and, and poured that glass of um, water, whatever it was, uh, before even I noticed it. So even just when we're sitting at table, when we're eating, um, we can be looking at, uh, at the needs of those around us and see, can we do anything there to serve? Uh, of course, Our Lady was a wonderful example of this. She was the one who noticed that the wine had run out at the wedding feast at Cana. But in order to notice these things, we have to look for them. And in order to look for them, we have to have that attitude, attitude of servants, uh, that we love looking for needs, seeing how we can serve those around us, how we can serve our brothers and sisters. And so often it's maybe it's not with something material, it's not something material that they need, uh, but it's just a word of comfort or a message of comfort. Um, maybe that's another thing for Lent that we can think about maybe each day to think, well, is there anybody I can, I don't know if you use WhatsApp or SMS over there or, or another uh, messaging uh, app. Um, we use WhatsApp a lot here. So to think, well, during Lent, maybe I can have that, that little resolution every, every day in the morning, I just think, well, is there somebody I could send a, a WhatsApp message to today who I haven't contacted for a while? Somebody who just needs a word of encouragement, maybe just to ask how they are, or maybe, maybe remember that they have a, a sick family member or that they have some exam or something, something we can ask about. Um, again, just noticing the needs of those around us and being, being attentive to that. That's a great resolution, I think, for Lent. Then, of course, not just to do this as, as good men and women as anybody else, but for us Christians, the difference is that we, we see Christ in others. Um, as you did this to the least of one of these, my brothers or sisters, you did it to me. So it's not just our brothers and sisters we're serving, but it's Christ who, who remains hidden within them. Um, and that way, uh, not only do we serve our brothers and sisters, but we're also serving Christ. So another resolution, can I see Christ? in at least one uh, person, uh, perhaps maybe the first person I meet each day, can I try and see Christ in that person? And all of this is very good to consider in Lent because Lent, as we know, is a, is a season of conversion, a season in which we have to really try and tackle our selfishness. Um, and in this, we can always improve. Maybe we already are quite good at noticing the needs of others, but we know that our selfishness is always something that we have to conquer. Uh, we can always love more. We can always love more generously. Um, Christ asked us, I love one another as I have loved you. And uh, if I were to ask, do I love others the way that Christ loves them? <laughs> Certainly, I think the answer is no. I could really do a lot more. 
um, there is still a lot of selfishness in me, a lot of pride, a lot of ego um, that I need to conquer. And so each, each Lent is a time for me to try with our Lord's help, with our Lord's grace, to conquer that selfishness within me so that I can really be uh, a man or a woman for others, uh, a person for others, a servant of God, a servant of my brothers and sisters. To do this, we need God's help. And so perhaps um, you'd just like to join me uh, in prayer as we ask God to, to give us hearts that are like the hearts um, of his son, Jesus. So we can pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, you call us to love our brothers and sisters in the way that Jesus loved them. You ask us to be other Christs in the world to see the needs of others and to respond generously to those needs so that we serve with all our hearts and with all our hands and feet and every talent and gift that you have given us so that we may really be at the service of others. And to do this, we ask the help of Mary, our mother, who is our wonderful example and model of faith and service. We ask her to intercede for us her children, as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you. It's been wonderful to share this little um, video with you. Um, again, nothing new, I'm sure, but... Maybe hopefully it's uh, just refreshed some things in your hearts and in your minds. Um, and I wish you every blessing for your Lent ahead. Um, and it's uh, nice to be in contact with brothers and sisters in the church around the world. So uh, very good to, to be with you uh, virtually through this video. Every blessing, God bless, and perhaps maybe we'll meet one day. <laughs> Take care and God bless.